In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a semi-cylindrical panorama. In front of me, I've got a folder of 12 images, and uh, to get these 12 images, uh, I went out to uh, a location, and uh, I set up a tripod, and I took uh, these 12 photos uh, in a complete circle. Uh, so if you notice, between these two photos, uh, we have about one-third overlap. And then between these two photos, more overlap, and these, and then it goes all the way down the line. So if I bring them all up at once, you're going to see between each of them, they all have uh, some overlap. And then when I get to the end, the very last one and the very first one have a little bit of overlap uh, of the same tree in there. That's so the stitching software is going to be able to find similar areas of the image uh, and be able to seamlessly pull it together. Uh, the stitching software I'm going to use today is uh, Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended. Uh, after you've got all the images in the folder, uh, select all of them. I'm just going to use uh, Control A or uh, Command A on the Mac. Then go up to uh, Tools inside of Bridge and then go to Photoshop, Photo Merge. This is going to open the Photo Merge dialog box. I'm going to select Cylindrical uh, because that's what we want to do today is create a cylindrical panorama. Uh, I'm going to make sure blend images together uh, is checked. That's very important because you want the images to blend nicely together. So when somebody's using the panorama, they don't get those seams or anything of that sort. Uh, and then I'm going to click on vignette removal. Uh, and if you have are using certain lower quality lenses, uh, this is actually going to uh, eliminate uh, some of the light fall off that happens towards the uh, edges of your images. And uh, what that is, uh, it's just kind of a little bit of a darkening uh, around the corners. Uh, I'm going to leave off a uh, geometric uh, distortion correction. Uh, I guess I encourage you to play with that, uh, but I have found that it'll sometimes uh, crash slower computers, uh, but it uh, does kind of help uh, for some of them. So if you're not getting the results you want, go ahead, come back, try geometric distortion correction, and let's see how it works for you. So I've got all my source files in there that I selected from Bridge. Uh, layout is selected as cylindrical, and I got blend images together and vignette removal uh, checked. And all I have to do now is click OK. Now Photoshop is going to take uh, the 12 images that we had and it's going to stitch them together into a cylinder. The panoramas came up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, crop tool, uh, which you can click uh, C as a keyboard shortcut, or if you go all the way over to the toolbar on the left, uh, you've got your crop tool uh, right there. Then on the options bar on the top of the screen, I'm going to click clear to make sure that there's nothing uh, constraining any of the proportions. And then I'm also going to go to view and uncheck snap. Uh, the reason for that is that we're going to want to get really close uh, to where uh, we want to crop. And we don't want the computer to start uh, choosing wh where it would be for us. Now, Snap is extremely helpful in some situations, uh, but this is one of them that we're going to avoid. So I'm going to bring the crop in. And then I'm going to start off uh, by pulling uh, from the top. And the goal is, see all this transparent area, the uh, white and gray checker boxes? Uh, we want to get rid of all that because we don't want that in the panorama. When somebody's looking at it, uh, we don't exactly want them to <laughs> see this uh, transparent area that will probably show up as white or black uh, when we eventually create the panorama. All right, then I'm going to come up from the bottom. Then over from the left. And then again over from the right. Okay, looks like I've got it. So I'm going to go ahead and click this checkbox up here to confirm the crop. Okay, now we've got uh, the panorama that we're going to save and uh, load into our uh, panorama program. Uh, so to save it, I'm going to click uh, Control Shift S or Command Shift S on the Mac. I'm going to save it as JPEG because uh, it's going to agree with the software that we're going to be using today. Okay. 
I'm just gonna name it Panorama One. And you notice how we get this little warning that says uh, file must be saved as a copy. Uh, it's because we're saving it as a JPEG uh, from a file format, a PSD, that has uh, layers in it. And uh, we're not going to want to have those layers. Uh, JPEG does not support layers. Uh, so if you see this warning sign, that's all right. It's just uh, letting you know that it's going to be saved as a flattened image and as a copy. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to leave the quality at 12. Because when we bring it into the panorama viewing software, it's going to use its own compression uh, to bring down the file size fur further. And we want to make sure to have the largest amount of information going in uh, so the best quality information can come when we're going out. So I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to bring up uh, Pano 2 VR. I'm going to go to Select Input. Then for Type, I'm going to select cylinder. If you have the ends matching up perfectly, and I've got another tutorial that will show you how to do that, select 360 for the horizontal field of view. Uh, our ends do not match up, so we're going to select 359. What this does is when somebody's view viewing the panorama, when they get to an extreme uh, edge of the panorama, it'll stop and then allow them to go back to the other way, and then I'll stop on that end and allow them to go back to the other side. Uh, so they will not be able to spin completely around. Okay, then under Files, Panorama, I'm gonna click Open. Okay, then once I have my file selected, I'm gonna click OK. Okay, next I'm gonna click Modify. And this is where we get to have our uh, first view of the panorama. Uh, if you click on the panorama and then you drag, it's going to give you a little preview of uh, what we put together. Uh, now the nice part is we can now select our uh, starting field of view. Uh, so what you want to do is you're going to find in the image the most uh, aesthetically pleasing part. And so I think we're going to go with uh, this path over here. And I'm going to click uh, Set. Then I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit more under Field of View. I'm going to click the Down button, Zoom In. And I'm going to move it over a little bit. And there we go. And I'm going to click set again. Then I'll click OK. Well, we're going to go up to output, uh, new output format. We're going to select flash and then click add. Under window size, I'm going to take it from 640 uh, down to 570. And I find this works uh, pretty well for a lot of uh, blogs and content management systems. Uh, so it's just a recommendation, but if you have a certain uh, window size uh, that you want to uh, display, uh, enter it in here. All right, then under Advanced Settings, you can find a lot of options to be able to control parts of your panorama, uh, adjust colors, uh, and adjust text if you have it within your panorama. I encourage you to go into Advanced Settings and uh, adjust things and uh, play around with things so you can get uh, the best uh, experience for your user. From there, click OK. And create output file panorama one, click yes. Then we have our uh, semi-cylindrical panorama. And we can kind of move around in there. and take a look at uh, what we photographed in kind of a, as if you were standing uh, right in that spot where I was standing in the woods.